Paul and Lucas was saying, I don't know, if Alukia is in the finals, it's going to be pretty tough here. So, so many accomplishments there. But will Lucas be able to get through Lugia on the other side of this bracket? What do you think about those prize cards, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, for Brandon, that's not terrible. You can work with those prizes. On the other side, Lucas is typically going to run into a little more trouble with all of the one-off counts. You see the Reggie Lecky there, the Radiant Charizard. These are pieces that you'd like to accumulate here and there, especially if you're going to work in a nice stall strategy or just go for that closeout power with the Radiant Charizard. We'll see if that comes into play here. Yeah, it might get a little bit clunky here, but we're going to start off our grand finale here in Los Angeles. Our Masters Finals underway here. Let's hear it from our crowd as we kick off this match. There's 75 minutes on the clock, so plenty of time to get a nice conclusion to this game. And I'll tell you what, Lucas is going to be doing everything in his power to get to that win. But <laughs> it's going to be tough, and I'm sure he's hoping that Brandon on the other side Maybe doesn't have a, a great starting game. Yeah, let's hear it for <laughs> Luminion, everyone. <laughs> Luminion with the finals appearance here to start things off. I mean, what a tough start. I feel you... like that always happens every time. <laughs> and this is not Lugia Archives of old. You're not going to just throw the special energy on there and shuffle yourself back into the deck yes. with Aqua Return. You got to wait till Twilight Masquerade for that. You are stuck there. This is going to have to be uh, using. A, a way to move this Pokemon at the end, maybe a collapsed stadium to move it out of the board. It's an awkward setup, and Lucas loves to see that. That's an easy Pokemon that he could either target down to lock into the active spot or maybe steal some easy prize cards off of. Exactly. It's definitely a liability, and it got zero utility out of that luminous sign as well for Brandon. But Lucas, on the other side, is starting off with a Nest Ball here to get out that Rotom. So we're going to see some instant charges happening. Okay, so on paper here, Kyle, looking at this matchup, I mean, we already know that Brandon has played through eight control decks, has won every single one except for the one that he intentionally conceded going into top eight. So how do you, how do you, what do you do against this deck, Lugia Vistar, if you're Lucas? Like, what are your routes here, Kyle? Well, that doesn't seem fair. We can, <laughs> we can try to piece it together. Well, ultimately, for Lucas, give yourself as many cards to work with, go into that pitch out as soon as possible, and maybe you can develop a plan of either pure aggression towards your opponent to maybe take apart some of those pieces, like the Archeops, if they're vulnerable, you can you can target those down, try to take those knockouts, leave your opponent in that just yeah. draw, pass, draw, attach situation. Or if you can maybe use uh, something like that Mawile, lock up a Pokemon, you can get your opponent in a spot where a Chi Yu can come out of nowhere and just start discarding all of those useful resources. Well, I'm sure Lucas is going to have all of that on the brain as we started already with that extra draw support from that Rotom V. Was going to end the turn, though. Now we're over to Brandon's side of things as well. Uh, starting with that capturing aroma, and we're taking a look through the deck here now. I'm sure all 60 of those cards are in there, uh, or on the field, huh, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> At least 54 of them. You got a couple of the prizes. <laughs> yeah, that's <true. laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, that's a part of the field, okay? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, obviously you want to know exactly what you're working with here. You have plenty of time, and you know that as a Lugia player, you're going to take prize cards. It's inevitable at this point. It's just when can you get the setup rolling? If you can do it as early as turn two, then yes. you have the potential to start stealing those additional prize cards before your opponent finds that Pidgeot uh, or is able to draw into enough cards with that Rotom V. And that, that's the name of the game. With just the Minchino, it's not what you love to see. But Call for Family finds Lugia, and we like that. Yeah, we definitely like to see that. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's funny. I was actually looking for what was rolled off the capturing room, and I couldn't find the dice, and it was on the Luminion. It was oh. that Tails as well. <laughs> but, of course, we know uh, what was there now. But, yeah, we're going to have these, these Pokemon be drawn out of the deck here for Brandon off of that call for family. Some utility there out of the Mancino. You'll love to see it. Right, this is a list that plays 17 energies, and along with that is the four jet energies. They're so important. They're that way to uh, move in and out of the active spot, take advantage of situations where your opponent thinks that they might have the right Pokemon locked in the active, or they may not have to deal with a threat this turn. Mm -hmm. Instead, Machino is able to take full advantage of that and uh, add some additional Pokemon to the board, which means <laughs> yep. Lukia V-Star is a threat. It is so nice to see, and I feel like, 
a lot of people might be wondering, you know, how did Lugia get to this point here? And I mean, you know, it's a lot of control out there, but I just want to point out, Brandon said, I'm going to go against what everyone's saying about how bad Lugia is because I feel like it is going to be a strong field of just a ton of control. So that medical was amazing here. And now look at this finals there for Brandon. Lucas here playing off of this Arvin. It's going to grab that four seal stone. Going to uh, have access to anything in the deck uh, once he wants to activate that there, as well as that buddy, buddy Poffin to get these Pokemon out on the field. Of course, 70 HP or less. I'm sure you're familiar, Kyle. Yeah, I've seen that once or twice. And <laughs> especially when you see the Buddy, Buddy Poffin, you know where Rare Candy is already in hand as the Forest Seal Stone can search out the Pidgeot. And that is ready to roll. As now the Rare Candy Pidgeot turn two is uh, out there. And you could even continue to add on to the hand size with the Kleppa. Smooth. Or you can get feisty with the Entei. Yes. Love to see the energy attachment there. Yeah, the Entei V here, one of Hagster's picks for our caster selections. What does that card add to this deck as far as um, an inclusion here? Yeah, I, well, not only is it a great answer to Dialga Beastar, as we've seen it start to raise uh, in the meta, we've seen that percentage continue to rise up, but just having an attacker in this deck can yep. be so important. It doesn't have to be Rare Candy into Charizard. It doesn't have to be after all the prize cards fall, Radiant Charizard starts to uh, work into the mix. Instead now, you have this answer where your opponent has to deal with this threat, and that's just two free prize cards for uh, the Charizard to come back out and start dealing 240, which is a lot more relevant of a number. Well, we see Lucas stacking up the hand here with a ton of resources there. And we're back over to Brandon's side of the fields now. It's it's pretty wild to see only one card has been played here so far. But uh, hopefully we're still sitting pretty depending on what is going on with this hand. We're going to start things off with an Ultra Ball. It's only going to be one Archeops hitting the discard pile as of now and a Mist Energy as well. Yeah, this, I mean, it could have been the age-old tale of is one Archeops enough, but this is a hand that can get it done. Yes. The second Ultra Ball, this means another Archeops will oh, wow. hit the discard pile. You lose a couple of those missed energies. Just a couple? That's a, that's a sacrifice we're willing to make. Yeah, definitely. And that Ultra Ball, of course, you can search anything out with Ultra Ball. The first one was that Archeops to toss it in the discard. This next one is going to be that Evolution for that Lugia, turning it into a Lugia V Star. And of course, that very familiar V Star power, Summoning Star. We're going to see the flip of that V Star marker to get those chops onto the field. So we got a side of chops here, Kyle. <laughs> we love the chops. And sure <laughs> enough, they're going to make a great impact. Impact. The question now is, what is in the rest of the hand? Is this a hand that has Chinchino and, oh, and Boss's orders, yes. Knockout Pidgeot? No, oh. it's going to be a Lugia V-Star doing some nice, honest work against <laughs> likely a Kleppa. <laughs> it ain't much, but it's honest work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's going to do exactly what it needs to. But I'm for Lucas, you, you take a look at this and you say, whoa, yeah. uh, I've seen seven energies already. Yes, that is a bit scary. That's 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 not bad. For you've Brandon. Seen, yeah, you've seen <laughs> you've seen plenty so far. And what is this last card? He's gonna just reveal that this wow. is, uh, this is my hand. That's uh, it. A prize card. <laughs> yeah, that is gonna be the hand. One single prize card taken. Oh, I didn't get to see what it was there, but yeah, that that's all we had to it. Those Archeops charging up those energy there. Lugia Vistar taking a prize card off that tiny little Kleppa that was left in the active, and Lucas is uh, available to respond here. Going to retreat out of that Pidgeot, of course, uh, full free into that Entei V with a Miss Energy on it. Yeah, and love to see this as well, the Fleet-Footed immediately to start. If you find the card that you would have searched for with the Quick Search, you just get rewarded. It's like two Quick Searches that turn. Yeah. Looked like it was a Penny, which could be a pretty interesting card to throw into the mix. We are dealing with 230 hit points. The attacking Pokemon on the other side mm -hmm. deals 220. I like that math. <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> that is definitely what you want to be seeing here if you're Lucas. You don't want to lose these uh, these precious prize cards here. So Lucas is definitely going to take a look at the hand. As we've talked about, there are a ton of cards in it right now. So just weighing all these resources out because this is going to take a lot of uh, planning as far as these future turns. And that's what you see with these decks. But Ultra Ball is going to get us a Pokemon out of the deck here after a couple of discards. Yeah, it looked like the Pidgeot Quick Search was for a rare candy. Now the Ultra Ball can find that Charizard. You don't have to search for a Fire Energy if you just throw three onto the board, and that's going to work 
pretty nicely here. Not only Absolutely. do you have the Ante ready to go, but Charizard waiting in the wings could mm. take the knockout on the Lugia V-Star on the following turn. We saw that Penny as well in the hand, so he can avoid giving up some prizes. Ooh. Is this the boss's orders where you start chopping it up? I yes. love this strategy. Yep. Yeah, you talked about this already, Kyle. You know, you gotta, you have to put as many obstacles in front of your opponent as possible, and that's what Lucas is going to be doing here. Wow, look Putting at that! The, the dominance here. Not only is it an NZV that's about to take out one of these Archeops, an essential piece of the Lugia V Star deck, but it's also going to get a little bit of extra HP here, and by that I mean a hundred extra HP on that Entei V as well. There so. you go. You're now out of range of a Chinchina. You knocked out yeah. the Archaeops. It can only search out two energies a turn. Even if you attach from hand onto a Chinchino that doesn't currently exist right now, you're only dealing 280 damage. It's not nearly enough to handle this Entei. Yeah, this has been beautiful. It's been clean. And this, if you're going to beat Lugia, this is definitely the way to do it. I mean, just that Charizard EX. I mean, a tiny line being in this deck, but seeing the utility of that Infernal Rain ability to get all of those energy out and just put those threat levels on the board is incredible here. And Brandon is now feeling uh, feeling a little nervous, I'm sure, after one of those Archeops is gone. And the only way to get him out is that summoning star. So... Uh, unfortunately, retired at this point in this match. It did its job. It, it loves hanging out in the discard pile, and it's going to go back to, <laughs> to its home now. And this is certainly going to be a big turn now for yeah. Brandon. As you understand that there's a lot of pressure on you. The pow pad may have been the most devastating part of that turn because, yes, you did lose to the one boss's orders there, but now it's shuffled back into the deck. Yeah, that's Pitch scary. Pitch quick search is waiting to take that knockout once more. And once you get your opponent into... Draw, attach, pass, draw, attach, attack, whatever it may be. You can definitely work with that as a control player. Yeah, the pressure is on here, and it is definitely brought up by that Pidgeot EX that adds so much utility to the stack, being, being able to just search out whatever you want here. And unfortunately, Brandon's just going to have to take a swing into the super bulky Entei V. And that's, that's the boss's orders in hand. Look at that. Was it top decked? I mean, it's, it, it is a, it is a one of copy of Boss's orders, and it was found, I assume, off of the fleet footed. Wow. That's exactly what we were talking <laughs> about last turn. When you get bonus quick search because you win the one in 30 That's flip there. Wild. <laughs> Lucas, all the luck on his side of the field here in this game one between but these players. Now the problem is, I'm pretty sure Lucas's heart was set on using Penny this yeah, turn, but true. now he's got a debate. Do you just handle this Archeops right here, right now? Yes, you lose some pretty valuable resources in that NTV and the, the Hero's Cape as well, but it, it's, it's so tempting. I know. I feel like I'd rather be having those debates, though, versus the, the debates that Brandon's probably having <laughs> on the other end of the field here. <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 wish, I wish I could play one of those supporter cards. They look fun. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Here's my hand. Two cards right now. And it's going, going to be the boss's orders wow. here. Look at the dominance in this move here, taking out this second Archeops from the field. Kyle, how are you feeling about this? I think Lucas has the perfect game plan. We talked about the way that you can handle this matchup. This is exactly it. It seems so unlikely. It's a 101 Charizard, the one Entei, the one everything, except yeah. for the 202 Pidgeot line. And it showed up as early as turn three with a boss's orders. Woo, Lucas, feeling focused, I'm sure, but very happy to see what's going on here. And Brandon, just stuck in a pickle here. Both Archeops down. Lugia V-Star does still have the energy, of course, so we're still going to get this knockout here on the Entei V. But uh, we're going to have to see some more from Brandon going forward. At least we have the energy already on the field at this point. Well, there are two copies of Pow Pad, so maybe there's an instance where if you have the double turbo in hand, the yeah. Pidgeot could attack into that Minchino and remove that big threat. And then there's one final threat remaining, that Lugia V-Star. Allow your opponent to take some prize cards, and then Charizard can easily handle that Pokemon. Well, from Lucas here, going to start off with an Arvin oh, for this turn. Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> Lucas is losing right now. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it, but Prime Catcher would be an option too. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah, there's a there's a lot here that we're working with, Kyle. Or counter catcher, excuse me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess technically either one, but yes, I know what you meant, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Your favorite. <laughs> it's back. 
<laughs> well, off of that Arvin, we have the Hisuian Heavy Ball, as well as that Defiance Band being sought out of the deck. Going to go into the prize cards with the Heavy Ball here for Lucas. Yeah, I'm, at this point, you, you start to identify which attackers you have remaining. The Radiant Charizard can help clean up. At this point, the Charizard EX is looking to potentially uh, have that Vitality Band to incorporate a little extra damage, too. And this is looking pretty great for Lucas here. Yeah, I'm sure feeling super happy at this point in time for Lucas and all the all the cards are just lining up here now and it has been super smooth. We're even gonna have an additional battle pad here and look at Brandon's face at this point. Okay, all right, sweet, like, going I back knew, in the deck, like, awesome. I, I know you play one. How have you bossed me <laughs> yeah. three times yeah, It's already. brutal, <laughs> like honestly, I cannot believe that's uh, how this is going here. I really expected it to be a lot more clunky but Lucas is just flying through these turns. Radiant Charizard now hitting the field for Lucas seeing yeah, this, We're cruising. At this point now, you can just play out every one of these one-ofs. Now you have that energy for the Radiant Charizard if your opponent is able to potentially ever handle this Charizard EX or knock out that Rotom, whatever yep. it may be, you have the answer there. And Lucas even has the backup plan oh of Pidgeot gosh. with the double turbo to knock this out some of these smaller Pokemon on the bench. Yeah, this is like the third backup plan that we have at this point, Kyle. There, there, <laughs> there's so many answers. You could throw the, the energy on the Radiant Charizard if you want yeah. so that you can incorporate that a little sooner. Look they, at they're this. all winning lines. Exactly. We're discussing multiple winning lines over there on Lucas's side. But then for Brandon, losing another Lugia V-Star here. Two prizes down for Lucas. Only two left to take to taste this win in this game. And Brandon just looking at a little Mancino. And really not a lot of cards in the hand either, huh, Kyle? Yeah, he's maybe going to taste the special sushi roll coming up. <laughs> Chinchino finally has an opportunity to see the board. But you have to combo that with, what, boss's orders to take a relevant knockout here. And even then, you're still one prize short and you're attaching a single energy per turn. Which Pokemon gets the job done? This is no longer a list wow. that has Radiant Charizard. We're going to move on to game two already. Incredible showing there from Lucas. And that's going to be it for our game one. Lucas is taking things down here with the control deck. And, I mean, we've gone over this so many times. Brandon has gone through a variety of control decks yeah. back and forth. And still, Lucas stands in the way. And I, I guess I should say this. Because I talked to Lucas and, you know, he was saying, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a tough finals if I have to face off against Lugia. But you know what else he said, Kyle? Let's hear it. He said, I'll just play better. Ooh, <laughs> sign me up. That is, it is on me to change my fate. And I love hearing that. He has that opportunity now. Of course, we saw how everything can go right in this yes. opening game. I was able to find the turn two Pidgeot. It just searched into everything perfectly. The Entei lines up so well with the math there it's in beautiful. the beginning stages. Brandon really just did not have an answer. And when that boss is played back to back to back, you can't beat this. I mean, it was incredible. It was a quick game as well. You know, I thought it'd be quick in the other direction, but it, it really was not. I mean, the Kleppo was removed from the field there with that play from B Brandon, but hitting the discard pile. I'll tell you what, it lost a lot more uh, on, on the side here was that Archaeops hitting the discard pile for Brandon, and that was Lucas's strategy here. Take out these Archaeops, debilitate my opponent completely so that there is no strategy in the late game of winning this versus what Lucas was doing here, lining up all these attackers, uh, Hackers, having several backup plans so that no matter what happened on the other side of the field, Lucas was ready to respond. And that is what got him the win here in our game one. It worked out so well. You see, his, Brandon's deck is called Big Lug. That's what he's <laughs> named this deck. Big Lug. You know ready what he forgot? Slug. What? He forgot the chops. I know, little chops. <laughs> exactly. Did. When you show no respect to chops, the chops are punished. Double fire energy in the prize cards could be a little awkward there for Lucas. And the Entei as well, the MVP, along with that Forest Seal Stone. Where we ran out of the rest of the deck list over <laughs> yes, here. I was about to say, how many energy are in there? Oh, wait, we printed this off, and it's two pages, and I don't have the other page, so I can't see the energy amount. That is funny. Well, oh, my gosh, look at this, Kyle. What just happened? This is my favorite stalemate. Oh. <laughs> you can't knock me out. Yeah, that was it, though. It's just a pass with the Mimikyu there. <laughs> yeah, you can't knock me out. Do something. <laughs> 
of the uh, nice little uh, guarded Mimikyu there in the active position. And Brandon now on. This is our turn two of the game here, but turn one for Brandon. Going to Ultra Ball right away, but that is two evolutions hitting yeah. a discard pile already here for Brandon. Refresh me on the price cards, Kyle. Anything wild? Uh, but those fire energies <laughs> is, oh, yeah, is the only true. thing I noticed. Nothing yeah. crazy for Brandon, Brandon though. seemed like he was going to have a fine game here. Now, you see the Ultra Ball. Likely, uh, these uh, Ultra Balls are going to find an Archaeops, and he may be reading the wind in a point like this. Maybe there's a supporter to go along with it. Yeah. But you have no pressure on the other side. No Rotom drawing additional cards. No Buddy Buddy Poffin yeah. to be Candy Pidgeot, Candy Charizard, Kachow. It's not <laughs> happening this time around. <laughs> What is the answer here? Yeah. Luminion could search out for that supporter to help out too. True, and yes. We'll see what the what the choice is here for Brandon. Yeah, there is uh, um, the option of a supporter since this is turn two here of the game. So we'll see what Brandon chooses to do. But it looks like it is going to most likely be this Luminion coming down onto the field. Yeah, depending on the rest of the hand, if there's another Ultra Ball, the Jacques would be an incredible play. You can search out both of those evolution Pokemon. Yeah. It looks like this is lining up just a dandy. That honestly might be what is in hand. I don't know. The, the, the Pokemon are being laid out here. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> there you go. Sign I couldn't me tell because that, was, yeah, that was a special artwork of it, but looks snazzy here for Ooh. Brandon Vaughn. And I'll tell you what else is snazzy. These plays right now, this is exactly what you want to see as the Lugia player in this match right now. Ultra Ball discarding those two Archeops after that Jacques, of course, drawing out those Archeops. And this is clean. We just uh, I love. Nice. Wow. <laughs> That is so brutal here. I mean, we saw that call for family in our last game, and we're going to see it once again here from Brandon. Just except, for one. Yes, just for one. <laughs> just, you're waiting for that, huh, Kyle? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just for one, Mentino here joining the board. But uh, the opposite of what happened in the last game was Lucas had at least established a little bit more with that Rotom V. Now, it's just the Mimikyu and active so far, but it's not over. It's far from over. We're going to start off with an Arvin here. And Lucas is going to be keeping track of the resources and, of course, mapping out what is in the prize cards here. Definitely going to probably take note that there's a couple energy missing. Yeah, unfortunate to see there. It leads to not having all of the resources to take knockouts, and this is a threat. Brandon could have the turn two. Shinshino ready to roll and load that Pokemon up by way of Summoning Star into Archeops into Energies Galore. Mimikyu would easily be knocked out. And then how do you answer this Pokemon? As it will seemingly just collect piles of special energies, and if there's a boss's orders, that's knockout on Pidgeot, that's knockout on potentially Charizard, and then you can really start to fly to game three. Yeah, exactly. We, we've discussed how smoothly the last game here went for Lucas, but this is where things could get potentially a little more clunky as well. And if Brandon is able to have a nice, smooth, clean gameplay because Lucas isn't able to show that aggression, as we saw in the last game, could get a little tricky here. But Arvin is going to select that first card. It's going to be the item card, of course, off the Arvin, this as well as a tool card coming out. Yep, I, uh, this is where I put my Forest Seal Stone, if I had one. It's, it's in the prize cards, and this now means that the Rotom V is not going to be the recipient of that, which would have led to what? Uh, maybe a Buddy Buddy Poffin. You could search out all of your Pokemon, draw three additional cards, and then you do threaten to have an attack or at least some search with that Pidgeot at some point. And instead, now it's this slow pace we're gonna just instant charge and hopefully find some help here because this is not how you win games yeah that's tough too because the arvin was actually the very first card played like at all for lucas so there was really no knowledge until going into the deck uh from that arvin so it is just going to be the instant charge here oh that's not the right one <laughs> i was like whoa what just happened <laughs> Oh, listen, I, I don't really play the video games here, Kyle, but I, I can tell you that. I don't think the little mouse turns Min into Lugia Min V-Star. Minchino reaching for its true potential. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forget these sushi rolls. I'm out of here. Yeah, that is great to see. But, uh, yeah, Brandon flying through here now. We do see the both evolutions now on deck here. The key little Chinchino as well as that Lugia V-Star. Primal Turbo jumping in to the deck to get these special energy cards out and accelerated onto the field. Yep. And, of course, 
the the Mincinos and the Chinchinos are going to be some of your most valuable resources. They reach the numbers that Lugia cannot. So load them up, protect them at all costs, give them that gift energy. Yeah. So that if they're knocked out, you can reach for those additional cards that turn into bosses' orders or whatever you need to continue to draw prizes. Yep. Why not Iono your opponent after they just Ooh. rode them back up? Yeah, instant charge plus three, and now uh, back down here. Six cards for both of our players after they shuffle their hands and put it at the bottom of their deck for each of them. Yeah, Chinchino just has so much utility. I mean, the min the Minchino with the call for family, you got the special roll. It's a one prizer as well. It's brutal. Yeah, I mean, Minchino's dusting your house and taking care of the chores. <laughs> Chinchino's keeping you fed. It's a, it's a good tag team. Coming and out it definitely swinging. definitely knocks out Mimikyu's. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah, that's just another utility that you have from it. And then along with the gift energy as well, there's always some sort of utility that this cute little Pokemon is given to you. So we are just seeing, I mean, wow, this Mimikyu is going to go, and then it's just a Rotom. Yep, good luck. <laughs> you have, you also, you have no energy to move this Pokemon. It's, I believe it's just the one mist and maybe a, one or two fires that are My left gosh. over after the you look at what's left. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this just really shows the momentum swing here because we're going to see that knockout now from Chinchino. And like we said, Lucas stuck with a Rotom. Let's see what that Iono was able to get. And Lucas of course doesn't the even want to see what it is. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Oh, man, are they going to make me? He didn't even want to pick the hand up. Yeah. Brutal, but the Radiant Star is going to come down a Pidgey. It's just going to be a boss here to bring that V-Star up that has nothing on it currently and wow. that's it just the instant charge there from the road of v and we're back over to brandon well this is important as well now brandon has options you can either use the double turbo retreat this pokemon you could charge this pokemon up but i think the one thing you want to avoid at this point is if you do have access to a jet energy in the hand do not use it right now yeah. it's a way that you can put yourself in a trap if that luminion ever gets into the tempting trap you want to be able to move that Pokemon around and get those last few prize cards. Looks like Brandon's identified that. Clearly yes. wants to take this knockout on the Rotom V and be up three prize cards here. Yeah, it's it's cosplaying a little bit as a Charizard deck, but it is control at heart here. And there's a lot of those tech cards that can pop out of nowhere and put you in sticky situations. But Boss's Orders is going to bring that Pidgey up. Rotom V, you're sent back to the bench here, and that Pidgey's going straight to the discard pile. Lucas just looking at this hand like, okay, what do I do now? Yeah. Well, <laughs> there goes that plan. And yes. What do I have left? And oh, as the prize gosh. cards are taken, it's not enough to where you could see that Defiance Band, Fire Energy, Radiant Charizard, knock out a Pokemon like the Lugia V-Star. It's still just picking away at the the core pieces of the deck. We see them once more again placed on the board, yeah, the Pidgey, and finally a Charmander this time around. Yes. But if Brandon has the resources to pick these Pokemon off, there's no game to be had. Exactly. It's tough. It's like you're, you set up, your setup's gone. You set up, your setup's gone. But, I mean, at least we have some Poffin. You know, when I'm grumpy, feeling down, I just... Eat a buddy, buddy Poffin. Oh. I feel a little better. Oh, Eerie going to come out of here. <laughs> There's no worse feeling than playing Eerie against Lugia. The only <laughs> yeah, possible real. thing that could go right oh, for you oh, is uh, he, look, he doesn't even realize. Lucas didn't yeah. even know. <laughs> oh, there's an item? <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. I guess Sweet. I, I avoided one Chinchino evolution next <laughs> yeah, turn. But exactly. the, the only card you really want to see is that A-Spec Prime Catcher. And yeah. it's never there when you want it. <laughs> Unfortunately. It's just the top deck next turn. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been so done here, Kyle. Well, I mean, it's just going to continue as we've uh, already seen here. The momentum has definitely swung in Brandon's favor for this game, and it's continued to uh, do so, especially after these primal turbos just go back into the deck. And uh, Brandon's able to see what else is in there, what resources we have left to work with as far as special energy. And I know there's some in there, but it's none accelerated right now? Safety first. There you go. Well, I believe two jet energies are in there. You know you're going to knock out this Rotom V on this turn. Yes, unless, of jets. course, you have the boss's orders to target down some more interesting Pokemon, as you see the Pidgey and the Charmander once more. But if you have two jets, it means that you'll always be able to move that Luminion twice. Yeah. 
That is fantastic. We're seeing the boss's orders here. This is exactly the strategy we've been seeing so far here from Brandon. Just trying to get rid of these Pokemon that Lucas is trying so hard to set up here, get some sort of game plan going. But Lugia V-Star is going to say, sorry, Charmander, you're going to the discard pile. And Ultra Ball is going to get Lucas this Pidgeot EX. So finally, we're going to see uh, an evolution here, of course, if we have that nice little rare candy. Yep, it works out here. You see now the quick search is available. And Brandon's played a few resources at this point already. We see, yep. goodness, 10 energies that are already on the board now. And you're also talking about a couple of bosses' orders, too. So Lucas might feel like this is an opportunity where you can uh, catch a card like that Luminion, trap that Pokemon, and avoid uh, at least being attacked for a couple turns. Yes. And that th that's really all you need is buy time, let Pidgeot grab the Super Rod, find the Charmander, bring back some of these Pokemon, and just give me a chance. Yes, but will there be enough time? That is the true question in this matchup, and Lucas is going to try to hold on as much as possible. Countercatcher, of course, being behind, and prize cards being activated here to bring that Archeops up into the active position now for, for Lucas to uh, swing into. Yeah, this is also a pretty fair play, too. You can, with with the Archeops in the active spot, maybe your opponent actually commits energies to it. Goes for Speed yeah. Wing, and you can... You can catch them uh, wasting resources. It's not it's not too bad as well, but Speedwing also applies a bit of pressure. Yeah, that's true. There's options there, but maybe you potentially throw your opponent off their game a little bit, disrupt their game plan. Maybe they slip up. Who they knows? Just, they just throw triple jet on the Archeops <laughs> and get whoa, in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't wish that on this game here, Kyle. All right, no, we're just going to see that nice little mall while come into the active position and the tempting trap. It's looking pretty tempting right now. Well, four cards in the hand. J-E-T is what we're looking for. <laughs> J-E-T, indeed. Oh, wow. Taking a look through the discard pile here for Brandon. I mean, there's there's a lot of cards in hand, too, aren't there? What What is the discard pile going to tell you at this point? I don't know. <laughs> I guess how, uh, how many a, energy are there's there? There's nothing to get back. <laughs> Listen, we're just we're just figuring things out okay. as we go here. Kyle. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, indeed. Oh, look at this! This is the energies for the Archeops. So Speed Wing is gonna put on as much pressure as it can. Wow. Well, here we go. That Primal Turbo is gonna be activated here, and now that Archeops has been uh, lined up with energy for the Speedwing. Did, did you think that was uh, potentially going to happen there, Kyle? Uh, well, uh, you, you have a few choices. You can either get aggressive, attack into this Pokemon, or you can wait until you find Jet. And if your hand has no supporters, you, don't have it, yeah. you need to put pressure on this Pokemon. Then your opponent can't go searching for Penny, Whew. pick this up, and stall every turn. They have to... Uh, they can't go searching for the Charmander, rather. They have to use the Penny now, and... That buys you that time because they're not building on their board state at that point. Well, that Archeops at least now is is able to not just be trapped in the active here. It actually has some sort of utility. But we're playing a couple more cards here. Ultra Ball. Or discard two Pokemon there. And that Lugia V-Star and the Archeops now as well. Yes, seen potentially... Chinchino was around, but after the, the early discard of one, maybe one of the prize cards potentially, it looks like that isn't going to be an option. And it's a pretty big tell for Lucas as he takes a look and realizes, oh, you, you yeah. didn't evolve. That, All right, I don't have to worry yeah, about that guy. Awkward. Okay, there oh it is. Oh my gosh, it was it's, the, it's the other card in his <sighs> hand. Sure, thanks. That looked really scary for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that looked really scary. Like the last thing you want to give uh, is a control player information about yep. your deck. So <laughs> glad that we saw that Chinchino coming down there for Brandon. So lots of Pokemon that are fully evolved now and have lots of energy on them. Let's see what Lucas is going to do. It's exactly what you called Yee. there, Kyle. That Penny's going to scoop all that damage Baited. up. Look at this. Now, yep. he, now he wants you to do it with the other one. Go ahead. Play a gift energy. Oh play a double gosh. turbo. Put them on this Pokemon. I want to see, what, 15 energy on the board at this yeah. point? He wants to see every single energy so that he can try to lock up that Luminion. Yep, this is it. The tempting trap has been activated again, thanks to that penny, allowing you to pick that Pokemon back right back up 
and get it back down there. Archeops, once again, the other one. The other Ooh. chop here. <gasps> we got the prime It's catcher. better than a jet. It knocks out the bird. The bird here. The power of the sushi roll. The chin that Chino now up in the active. Thanks to that prime catcher, as well as gusting that Pidgeot EX into the active for Lucas's side. This is an MVP play for prime catcher. Brandon has seen this time and time again on the stream. It's been Iono's from the opponent into boss's orders. Now... Diano for himself finds the prime catcher one nice. prize card away and plenty of jet energies to avoid the traps. I, uh, I'm liking Brandon's chances. Yeah, this is beautiful here for Brandon. Thanks to that special roll taken out that Pidgeot EX. 70 damage for each special energy that is on that Chinchino. That's an expensive roll, I'll tell you what. Yep, that's a, that's a I, I can't afford that one. I'm, I'll go with the California. <laughs> well, we are going to see the counter catcher. Of course, Lucas well behind in this matchup to be able to activate that counter catcher. Get Luminion V into the active position now. But we know Brandon's got a little more tricks up the sleeve, potentially. They're still remaining in deck, but are they in the hand? My favorite, the, the discard pile check. <laughs> Just checking. Who cares? It's not a jet energy, and we have not seen that yet. So this Pokemon still remaining great ball potentially could find an additional Pokemon that you can throw into the hand and have sending out your deck here a couple more resources thinning is weaning <laughs> yeah the new saying <laughs> thinning is weaning here thinning is winning for sure and that is going to be a great ball getting another Pokemon out of there Brandon just needs to hit a couple more things here and take home a victory in this game only one prize card left to take but unfortunately, the, the trap is activated right Ooh, now. There's that so many opportunities seven here. Seven cards here for Brandon. Can we see a jet energy? Where's my boy Blue? Yeah, that th honestly, that artwork is there sweet. It is. There it is. The jet energy coming down here for Brandon Vaughn. That's going to throw that Chinchino up into the active position and take a knockout there. The last knockout needed to go to a 1-1. This is a game three in our Masters Finals here in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's right. Plenty of time, too, about halfway through our 75 minutes here, and that is perfect Woo! opportunity for us as we move into game three. Both players showing off some great play yeah, in these opening great. games. We know the strategies now. It's just can Lucas find the cards at the beginning? Brandon yeah. put on so much pressure in this game. And I, you can still argue that things didn't go perfectly for Brandon. He was, yeah, exactly. He was missing a little bit in those middle spots, but he played it correctly. He had the resources to to attack with the speed wing and put the pressure on. And the uh, pressure started early here, as we saw. Turn two, Chinchino. <laughs> yeah, look at up. that. Look at that. Just the difference in board state there. I mean, we were just left with a Rotom B for a while. But Brandon didn't take that Rotom B out. It was going after the the Pidgey, the Charmander, look, one after one. Look how many turns Lucas attempted to feed him the Rotom. <laughs> yeah, like, no, take it, boss's please. orders, boss's <laughs> orders again. I do not want this knockout. <laughs> I'll take it when I'm ready. Exactly. Hey, our great players know exactly where to take their knockouts. They assess the threat levels on the board, and they take them where they need them to win the long game, not just take prize cards. And that was it for that game there. Brandon Vaughn bringing us to a 1-1 here. I hope our crowd out there is hyped to see this final. That's right. What do we have left? This is a very important opening hand for both of our players here in game three. Very I'm gonna, I'm gonna wish that there's no fish. <laughs> Please, no, don't start Luminion on here. Yeah, now, okay, so now I'm a bit scared here, Kyle, because we've kind of seen this go both ways for our players. Oh, so and... many energies, stop! I know, I was about to say, that was a, a lot of energy. I mean, we saw two fire energy Double in the last prizes. This is that's bad. That's not yeah, this is real bad actually on Lucas's side. Over for Brandon, a couple of uh, Pokemon, a couple energies, but I mean, what do we have? Like seventeen? That is a lot. So work with that. All right, here we are. We're kicking things off. I'm hoping for some luck here on Lucas's side with some difficult prize cards to start off with, but we're in our Masters Finals game three here. And TV at least getting some utility out of that fleet footage, drawing an extra card for the initial turn here for Lucas. Plenty of time on the clock to play things down here for both of our players. Nest Ball going to start us off on Lucas's side. And that Rotom V is out on the field as well. 
Yep, it's uh, just taking a look at those energies. It's two fire energies and the uh, mist energy, I believe, that are available in the deck. And, yeah. of course, we saw the three energies that are in the prizes as well. And Lucas is well aware of that. Those are some pretty important resources. But two fires is enough for a Charmander if you can find those pieces. It is more important, however, to establish that Rotom and start to draw with the instant charge. And it looks like that is the number one priority here. Yeah, this is a control style deck, so we need a lot of resources here to be able to uh, bring these strategies to the forefront here for Lucas. And we're going to just hope to see, uh, if you're Lucas, that Brandon doesn't have a super strong start as we saw in our last game between these players. Brandon really had everything. I mean, we saw those Archeops hit the discard almost immediately last time, thanks to that Jacques. What is Brandon working with here? Of course, the MUX is in the active position now. Definitely much better than a Luminion star. Yeah, it's blue, but we can work with this. Free yeah, retreat, yeah. copy some cool attacks, and it can draw you some cards every once in a while. Exactly. And does Brandon, Brandon doesn't like seeing the heads on the capturing aroma. <sighs> that makes me worry say, about the hand. This is scary. This is scary here. Looking at the hand, doesn't seem too happy. Didn't go straight into the deck right off the bat, off this capturing aroma. Of course, you can have heads or tails here off of this dice. It's going to be a heads, which means that's an evolution Pokemon versus a basic, which is why we're a bit scared here. What is in the hand? Right. Do we have other Pokemon? Typically, you play capturing aroma, you see heads. Yeah, that you're means hyped. you're throwing away an Archeops. Exactly. You're doing great, but that's only when you have a good hand. With the bad right. hand, you want to see Mancino and call for family. Uh, surely we have a supporter. Please don't be Professor's research if it's good cards. I'll say surely we have an energy. I can't mm. guarantee a supporter, <laughs> oh, but, no. but we'll see. Lots of cards and hands, but we, we haven't been able to see them yet. So Brandon is just going to keep track of these resources as far as what is in deck, identifying what's in the prize cards. We did see a couple energy uh, and Archeops. We we'll give V Star as well, but capturing Aroma is still the play here for Brandon for an evolution Pokemon. The longer this takes, the happier Lucas has to be. Exactly. We're, like, we're not moving fast. And <laughs> that means. Either you're going to lose a lot of resources on a professor's research, you know, or you have nothing. I will say, though, Kyle, Brandon is one for the theatrics. That's true. He, you remember? He, he did sneak <laughs> that Chinchino in on us. Yeah, I was thinking. Like, we saw the Great Ball, we were scared, and then a Chinchino <laughs> flew out of nowhere. In, in another game, or after another game Brandon played, we were talking to him, and he was like, yeah, I was trying to think of which, which uh, play would have been more entertaining for the stream. So, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, hopefully that is what we're working with as far as a difficult hands, at least. But we're going to see in a second, depending on what Brandon decides to do with the rest of his turn. Plenty of cards to work with. Okay. Can I the see them? The angle is not <laughs> I know. great. My eyes are already bad enough, Brandon. Please, <laughs> tilt them a little. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. It's just looking like energy potentially coming down onto this UEX. I mean, this is... This is soap opera level. <laughs> yeah. What is happening? <laughs> on the other side, uh, <laughs> Lucas drew into a fantastic hand on the Rotom V. So oh, he's just grinning yeah, ear cruising, to ear on that cruising. side. What is happening? It is okay, the Serena to discard wow. to how many cards? Two, three? That is brutal. Yeah, I guess there's just two left in hand. Is there, there a basic Pokemon? Five? Okay, thank you. Wow, yeah, that that is tough. That is the basic Pokemon we were looking for here found off of that Serena for just a couple of cards stacking the hand up. To five total in the hand, but that's it. It's just the energy down, the missed energy down onto the Mute EX. Lugia V now on the field. But Lucas is on the other side here. Tons of cards in hand now, thanks to that instant charge on the last turn. We are, uh, we do have the fleet footed still as well. That Pidgey is ready to get evolved into a Pidgeot EX. And that's happening right now on your screen from a rare candy. So lots of card potential here for Lucas. And the the uh, push is in Lucas's uh, hands here to take the momentum in this game three. Yeah, I mean, if if you can move the Enta, you could attack with the Pidgeot and start putting pressure on the exactly. Mew if you wanted. So, well, actually, you can't. It's the double turbo that's oh, in the no, prize cards, you're right? right. So, oh, no. How, how do you go about this? I suppose the best way is to just focus on that Charmander, and that looks to be the case. The Buddy Buddy pop in the Forest Seal Stone now, buddy and you can pop, search yeah. out that Charmander. Next turn, yeah. you will have the energies to accelerate those fire energies, and you can choose whether it's more important to play those onto the Entei or the Charizard. And at this point, 
it might just be aggressive Charizard because there's no Pokemon on the other side. Entei's not attacking yeah. for very much. Exactly. Entei is not attacking for very much indeed, but Charizard definitely would be. And, you know, Lucas is, I'm sure, very well aware of the energy that are still in deck, what is in the prize cards as well. So you know that he's formulating his strategies here around that. For Sealstone, it is going to be played down onto that Rotom V, allowing it to actually have a V-Star power in the Star Alchemy. That's why we see that V-Star token being flipped now. Any card that you'd like being drawn out of your deck. So it's a uh, it's a quick search, but in a tool. So double quick search, really. Yeah, valuing the the mist energy in this spot, which is a little odd because next turn, likely you'd think that you'd have access to the rare uh -oh. candy and the Charizard. But safety first. If you don't find any of those pieces, then next turn the quick search can just go for a fire energy, and you can attack with the Entei. So a little bit of a hedge here. We're stabilizing. We're stabilizing. All right, we're over on to Brandon's side of the field now. Let's see if Brandon can stabilize this match here. We already have one Archaeops in the discard pile off of that Serena that we saw played in the first turn. Lugia V also came down, thankfully, so he'd be able to get into that V-Star if it is available here for Brandon. But oh, this is looking just as brutal as far as choices go. Yeah, I mean, he, he showed off like six potential actions with the way his hand swung around, so... He's got something to okay. do, but Luminion looked to be the primary target this turn to at least get the ball rolling. Yeah, it just looks like there's a lot of debate. Maybe Brandon potentially getting in his head a little bit in this matchup here. I mean, it, it just looks grueling every single decision that is being made on this side for Brandon. But Luminion B is going to be the decision here that is made. Luminous sign being uh, bringing Jacques out of the deck. With the Jacques, you can search out, find that Archaeops. You can uh, get those evolution Pokemon that you're yeah. going to need. And so the Lugia V-Star, it may be one of those missing pieces we saw. I was about to say, we already have one Archaeops in the discard pile. Right. So one Archaeops here off the Jacques as well as that Lugia V-Star. Sometimes, well, usually we see the double chops, but it has some other utility there in that evolution of the Lugia V. Yep, this works out just fine. The, the issue now is... You have no Pokemon that really challenges this NTV, 230 yeah. hit points. Even if you have the double Archaeops, the likely answer will be the Lugia V. This mm -hmm. is a slow approach. There must not be a supporter. This is read oh. the wind, discard the Archaeops for three. Read the wind here. That is it. Wow, that is tough to see here, but that's exactly what we're going to see. Just the draw three cards now off of that read the wind after that jet energy brought the Lugia V into the active position. Lucas going to start off with a draw for turn, a fleet footed. We're seeing the energy come down now onto that Entei V for the turn as well. Straight into a, uh, a quick search or no, history and heavy ball first here. Yeah, so you can't grab any of those energies, although you certainly I would wish. like to. <laughs> Honestly, I still think shuffling up the prize cards, hopefully, is better. I think we will the, see. It the, is the very <laughs> important to see where they lie. Yes. These, these prize cards may be indicative of how the rest of the game goes. Exactly. Those energies are so vital to closing out. Yeah, uh, at least the Hosuian Heavy Ball is going to be uh, put into those prize cards. Hopefully not on the bottom, if our players are taking from the bottom up as far as prize cards goes. But that Pidgey going to be drawn out of there. Oh, Hosuian Heavy Ball, okay, I'm liking it, I'm bad. liking it. Very nice here. That is much better. The Heavy Ball is up at the top and the Energy are down at the bottom. So once we're seeing those prize cards be taken, Lucas will have much more... Uh, to do with this deck as far as the availability of those energy cards to charge up these alternate attackers here. Now we're going to go in with the quick search. Lucas has anything at uh, at the ready here from that nice little quick search. Takes a while to get into it. You got a rare candy into that Pidgeot EX, but there's so much utility that it holds for the rest of the match for you. Arvin is going to be played here now for Lucas, grabbing that rare candy. Yep, just finding some additional resources now. The Defiance Band 2, if your opponent does finally start to push the aggression, target down some of those other Pokemon, as Entei's likely not to fall anytime soon. But at some point, maybe, Brandon will be aggressive. But ultimately, thinning out the deck here is important. It means every fleet-footed, every quick search just gets you closer and yeah. closer to finding the right resources to close out. Yep, playing this like a champ here. 
I mean, that hand is huge. Lots of resources here that Lucas has been collecting over time. And how, I mean, how are you, how are you looking at this game here from here on out, Kyle? How do we rescue this? <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. If, if Lucas True. didn't use the Forest Seal Stone for the Mist Energy, this turn it could have been Rare Candy into Charizard, oh. double fire energy on the yeah. Entei attacking, and then you have that threat, the Charmander, is still a Pokemon that could be knocked out at some point. So perhaps if Brandon's able to target that down mm -hmm. in combination with finding the Archaeops, there's a, a bit of an avenue there to come back. But Minchino is a very big piece that we need to see in that final spot of the bench. Yeah, we need to start lining something up here for Brandon as far as the late game goes, especially now that we already have damage out on the field on this Lugia V-Star as well. But that uh, the primal turbos are gonna start flying here now for Brandon after, of course, that summoning star has brought out those colorless, no rule box Pokemon and the two Archeops from the discard pile. So these special energies are gonna start flying here. It's just which ones will be attached where. It's gonna be a gift and that double turbo energy onto this Lugia V-Star. Yeah, the gift energy seems to be a, a fair play, especially yeah. when Lugia V-Star likely to be knocked out at some point soon. But you got to use some cards. Yeah, the problem is this, I think there's like six cards already in hand. So That's what I'm saying. <laughs> after, after, yeah, you play just, the hand you, down a bit. <laughs> you got to play it down, and <laughs> they're just it doesn't work out right now. How, <sighs> how this hand is this big and still does not have a Mancino is beyond me. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways to search out Pokemon usually for these Lugia decks. So that is pretty surprising here. But maybe Brandon's holding on to something that we just haven't seen here. Today. He is. There's an Ultra Ball in oh there. Oh, my gosh. But we'll let Morty Whoa, see what, what he's the? found. Morty's conviction here. You know, whenever your Look, opponent Lucas had to verify. verifies what your card does in finals, that's a moral victory. Exactly. That is so funny here. I was talking to Kyle saying, oh, they still play the Morty's Conviction, right? And Kyle like, was no, like, no, the card's no. trash. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> but yes, Morty's Conviction going to draw these extra cards here for Brandon. That's going to bring us the Capturing Aroma, which was rolled a heads here. So that is going to be another evolution Pokemon. So it's just going to be that Archaeops. But the Archaeops is going to be fodder to the Ultra Ball here for Brandon, but that's another Lugia V-Star being discarded into the discard pile. One's already out and active, and we had one in prize cards too, no? Yeah, I, we're giving up on Lugia at this point. It's done its job. You're yeah. now focused on the uh, the Minchino Chinchino engine. The babies. We're going to be making the rolls and taking the knockouts. Uh, important to note that 20 damage is not on the Entei. That was a capture and roll yes. flip. I know. It keeps I, happening like that. I don't, I don't want... Well, thank goodness there's a double turbo on the Lugia. Imagine a fake knockout happening oh here. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, that would, that would be brutal. It's like, uh, I don't remember you tackling me. <laughs> yeah, wait, where, where's the 20 <laughs> damage? No, Brandon's done a great job of moving that dice out of there after the roll. Always seems to land on the Pokemon somehow, but... Mist Energy going to go down uh, as the attachment for turn onto that Minchino on the bench, getting it ready to start rolling here, no pun intended. And then we're just going to be swinging into this NTV with this Lugia V-Star Tempest Dive. Of course, that double turbo nerf in the, the uh, damage output just a little bit there for that Lugia V-Star. Now we're over to Lucas, and we're going to start off with the cutest Ultra Ball I've ever seen. I think it was a top deck, too, and wow. now Lucas considering, well, how do I want to work around this? I want to see the Charizard, but I don't want to see another Pokemon, so it's important to rare candy into this Charizard. Yeah. Then you'll have access to the Fleet-Footed. If you penny this Pokemon, the Entei V, you can bring that back up, have access to those energies once more, and since you already have the fire there, basically okay. recycle it, attach for the turn. Burning Darkness is going to be lined up. Yeah, there we go. The Infernal Rain allows you to seek out Ooh. those three fire energy. That's but a, there's none That's there. a big boy. 430 oh hit points. Get the, get the dice out here, Kyle. <laughs> there, is, there, is there a sushi maker big enough here to handle that Pokemon? I'm not sure. Oh, my gosh. I mean, just when we thought Charizard EX couldn't get any worse, now it's got a, a nice little cape on it <laughs> and uh yeah that is brutal to see here if you're if you're brandon having to work with just just your chinchino as your attackers it's exactly what lucas wants to see lucas 
Looking pretty pleased here with that, at least. Well, Lucas definitely has some thinking to do here. As you can knock out this Lugia V-Star, uh, take some prize cards, and you probably feel pretty comfortable. You could also move to your, your Charizard EX, and you have a plenty of hit points. But yeah, if you knock right. out this Pokemon, you know that your opponent is only dealing 200 damage each turn, and that is much more reasonable for you to deal with. You don't That's have true. to see your opponent find upwards of, what, eight more energies on this Pokemon and knock out a Charizard EX would be terrifying. Terrifying indeed. Yeah, and especially when you have options available in your supporters to kind of work around the damage being output on your field. Of course, a couple of penny are in the prize cards too, but there's three in the list. It feels so counterintuitive at this point. As a Pokemon player, you love the prize map. You love knocking out all of the two prizers, and you could go back to back to back, take all those Pokemon off the board instead. The greed. It's just <laughs> this this little dusting mouse. <laughs> He's terrifying. And what is the play, though? Is it boss's orders, or is it Penny? Just cleaning up here. Yeah, that is the true question. <laughs> Don't it's, mind me, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh, it's got to touch the field here. And it's yeah. going to be the boss's orders oh, here. Is it Archeops? It's Archeops what? here. Going for the old Wait, strategy the here. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be the Archeops. This play doesn't work like it used to in the previous game. There's too many energies in play. You're still, you still have to play against the Chinchino. Oh, my gosh. So. I mean, uh, clearly, it could work. You have to chain together back-to-back -back boss's orders. You could go after that second Archeops. There may be enough time, but the clock is ticking. That's very true. The clock is ticking indeed, and that is going to be the prize card, but it's not going to be that Chinchino, or sorry, Minchino. It's going to be the Archeops going down there for Lucas from that Entei V. All right. For the reach... Archeops does now limit the amount of damage that you could do if you had access to both. Then we could see the Chinchino reaching for potential, what, 420 damage with seven yeah. energies to go. <laughs> this now can only be six energies, which yeah. you're, you're, you're shooting a little underneath. It can't knock out the Charizard DX, but it still could go after okay. a Pokemon like that Pidgeot, which Lucas is uh, hiding. <laughs> hiding over there. Brandon identifying it is still there. We see it over there. It's just subconsciously like, do not <laughs> Please. go after Yeah, don't my look over bird. here. Nothing's over here. Yep, it's going to be that jet energy is what brings this Chinchino into the active yeah. position and now. And this is the difference. This is a Pokemon that is a viable threat that can knock out just about anything on the field, especially yeah. next turn. It will threaten that Charizard EX. So you can't target the Archeops on the next turn because you're going to lose two prize cards. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely kind of awkward here now, potentially for Lucas, that Chichino. Four special energy attached, 70 damage for each energy there. We're also seeing this Primal Turbo now for, for Brandon, looking through the deck here for these other couple of energy. Yeah, you, you, the, the question is how many energies do you feel like committing to yeah. Chinchino? And I think you have to put at least one on this Pokemon, potentially two. I guess two is, is the true answer because you don't have Lost Vacuum. If you do that, yeah. then you the respect from the Charizard does happen. The Entei has to handle the Chinchino. But Brandon's considering Mew in okay. this spot. Yeah, we've actually talked a bit about Mew EX yeah. this weekend. I don't think it's seen much uh, as far as attacking goes, but we've, we've talked about how it's a bit of an underutilized Pokemon. It's in a lot of decks, but it doesn't always seem to attack. What do you think about these energy being committed to the Mew EX here, Kyle? Well, genome hacking unlocks a lot of different attacks. The problem is control isn't known for having very strong attacking <laughs> options. True. You could copy the Burning Darkness, but clearly that's not going to be enough to knock out the yeah. Charizard with all of those hit points. And I think there's a window now for Lucas. He can target that Archeops and remove that from play. Chinchino Aww. is no longer threatening the Charizard. Yeah. But it's on Brandon to chain together boss's orders, try to maybe pressure these Pokemon here and remove them from play. Also, if you can combine this with an Iono, the hand is gone, the Pidgeot is gone, no searching is available. Who knows what happens from there? Exactly. It's going to come down to what cards can both of these players Thornton. draw now. Thornton! Yeah. Surprise! <laughs> 
That is one way to remove some pressure, and I, I love seeing that, as now the Rotom is no longer a threat. Your opponent was staring at four prize cards that they'd love to take down. Instead, it looks like it's just the Entei V as the easy option, and you, your opponent is still up, so you have options with that counter catcher to take down a Pokemon like the Archaeops <laughs> still. Yes, absolutely, Thornton. Coming out of nowhere here. I mean, these control decks, they have the text. They have the spice here. Switching a basic Pokemon from the discard pile for a basic that's already down here for you as well. Getting you getting you to switch out these these Pokemon if uh, some something goes down that maybe you didn't want to. And this is going to be a huge turn here for Lucas, taking out that threat of the Chinchino that had all those energy attached, committed to it there, but not enough to be... Uh, a bunch of energy there. Where do we go from here now, yeah, Kyle? The, the, you see the middle of the road play from yeah. the Entei. You, no longer using uh, the, the counter catcher to take the knockout. Instead, is going to remove the major threat of that Pokemon, but Archaeops is still in play. We could see the Minchino potentially be loaded up yes. by the Archaeops. Mew is putting on enough pressure to copy Bernie Rondo for some prize cards. Woo. Brandon would be two prize cards away from closing this one out. And if the Archaeops goes unchecked, it just continues to fuel the mouse. <laughs> yes, absolutely. As long as there's the energy there, Brandon can make sure those energy are being attached here off of this Archaeops. And, of course, manual attachments as well if the Archaeops is unchecked there on the field. Of course, our players are also at four to four prize cards now. This is our game three between these players. So it is all up to these last few turns between them to see what happens here in our Masters Grand Finals. And it's all going to start with this Archaeops bringing out these energy. How much do we even have left here, Kyle, that we're working with? Not much. This uh, looks like three or four energies remaining in the deck. So... Uh, reaching for the knockout. Minchino is basically working as a check for Rare Candy Pidgeot at this yeah. point. Your opponent can no longer search that Pokemon out and Rare Candy and evolve and feel comfortable if boss's orders is the answer. I think the most important thing for Brandon is if you play Iono this turn, you are going to set up a pretty great situation for yourself. Your opponent with no access to a fire energy and just a one energy Charizard is the only way they could take you down. Oh, yeah. Door Seal Stone doesn't work on a Cleffa. That <laughs> well, and it was already used anyway. <laughs> but that'd be pretty wild if it did. My little 30 HP baby. But all right, yeah, this is it. Oh, it's Brandon in the hand. It's ready has, to go. Has the Iono here. That beautiful full art. Iono looks like debating playing it. Play He's it. He's going to put it down. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, play it, play it. The crowd is clapping for oh. that Iono play. Did, uh, and, and that's huge. I, we didn't see the way that Lucas drew the cards, but I'm presuming that the fire energy could have been one of the cards found. So. Yeah, at least true. it's back in the deck at this point, but it's it's waiting on the bottom. There is no exactly. search ready to go at this point. Yeah, four cards for each of these players, but those hands were shuffled, put to the bottom. Who knows what Lucas has in hand to work with. But Brandon here is going to bench another Minchino here and check the discard pile. <laughs> the, the, the biggest waste of time but you know what you've accomplished enough you've earned it brandon hey you want to make sure you're not making any mistakes here in our grand finals <laughs> capturing aroma gonna be played we're gonna see that Ooh. heads here being rolled bringing out an evolution pokemon and that's what we like to see yep the chinchino is in there but oh, failed it brandon does not want that and this may be that the Chinchino's already in hand. Mm -hmm. You could potentially draw an extra card with this Mew if your hand is low enough. Yeah, we, we know those like to pop out of the hand every now and again. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Surprise here. You got a Thornton? I already have it in hand here. But yeah, we're going to see that restart here from the Mew EX, drawing one card. Of course, up to three in hand, so three total cards now in hand for Brandon. Whoa. All right, so it's exactly what you said here. Burning Rondo being used against Lucas, unfortunately, from that Mew EX, <laughs> copying the attack, taking the knockout here. Lucas reads the mist energy. He's like, does that save me? Oh. <laughs> I, I need some help. My oh. opponent's down to just two prize cards oh remaining. Buddy, buddy Poffin trying to find 
a bailout option. And I mean, I mean, <laughs> you can keep the Mew in the active, and it can trap you back. <laughs> <laughs> trap, trap, trap. I, I think yeah, there's too many hit points, anyways. Yeah, but yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just looking for any option here. Nest ball is the find. Nest ball is the find. Indeed, it's going to bring out that radiant Charizard here now for Lucas, or not. <laughs> None of oh these gosh. are great yeah, without I know, energy. Exactly. None of them, and that's exactly what Lucas is being faced with. It's just so difficult to look at the situation, try to map out how you can still win this when Brandon is just sitting at two prize cards left to take to be the winner here in Los Angeles. Counting the energies now. Yeah, true. You got it. And now, now this is a discard pile check I like that, this is, one. that is relevant <laughs> here. Yeah, Lucas, making sure to count all of these resources that have been used, especially 14. these energies. 14 energy, very important to note. Take a look at Brandon's prize cards. The last two energies Bring up, up the top there. There is one final energy remaining. And uh, what I didn't catch if it was a jet energy or not, but those two gift energies wow. are energy 15 and 16. The 17th is still available. But that does lead to some avenues where you could lock a Pokemon in the active spot. That is true. It could come down to just a super awkward Minion. situation of both of those. Minion energy. Oh in no. the active spot. There is oh one no. final energy to assist this Pokemon. Yeah, this is actually quite <sighs> scary. Could it just come down to this, Kyle? What? Clef a drawing. And he finds the, the fire energy. Yo, the grasping draw. The free grasping you, you draw are, off the clever. You are grasping at straws. <laughs> yes, and it exactly. works out just fine there. It works out. And double jet energy is in there. So this energy, if it oh were gosh. to retreat the little Minion, that is not That's enough. Yeah. Because after you move this Pokemon, you have to take a prize card in that same instance. It has to be finding the gift energy once more. But if you bring this Pokemon back up and then tempting trap, it is stuck. Oh, this is really scary i cannot believe it's coming down to this kyle in this matchup is it just going to come down to the fact that the prize cards were a little awkward here now and lucas finally uh, identifies the out here or the potential out looking at the knowledge of what resources brandon has already used here in this matchup obviously we've been through a long game three here now and we've seen the game one and two as well Prime Catcher is one of those cards we have to think about. I'm not sure yes. if that's already been used this game, but that is one final out. And it's being used right now to take the prize, but this takes the gift energy. The problem is the Luminion oh can be gosh. stuck. That is I definitely a problem. I don't know about this, I boo. am scared for this, Kyle. I that's the scared. one bailout button, and it's being used right now. But it does bring hey, Brandon down to hey. one final prize card. My heart is pumping here right now. Are we going to go down to one prize card here that Pidgey's wiped off the field? It's the energy. Of course, there was only that option here. That's beautiful. <laughs> what cards are remaining? Cleffa was grasping to yes, find some grasping. assistance. And we did for a second there. Penny pick up. This Charizard is... Going to hang on. It can take yes. the knockout. It is the only Pokemon in play, and it has 430 hit points. Yeah, this is the final boss, like, in every single way possible at this point. This is terrifying. The knockout is lined up. Yes, Chinchino can deal what? You have the one energy there. If you can Iono it back in, then you can have the access to two more energies. Oh, You're dealing goodness. What? <laughs> it, it, you're, you're close. You're doing yeah. 330, so if you played a vacuum, you could get there. That's not a card in <laughs> the list. That's not a card in the list, indeed. Well, that's that's it. That's This is what we have here now, Kyle. The knockout there. Two prize cards off that Lugia V-Star. Two cards were drawn off that gift energy that was on the Lugia V-Star as well for Brandon. And this is the draw for turn now. All right. Chinchino has to deal as much uh, damage as possible this turn so that a Mew could copy Burning Darkness to knock out this Charizard on the following turn. The number one goal for Brandon, get rid of that hand from Lucas. Way too many cards, boss's orders, a, a, even a, a counter catcher in the spot yeah, would this spot would mean knockout on a V Pokemon to end the game and win the regional championship.
Yeah, this is all coming down to what disruption can we see here from Brandon so that Lucas cannot just run away with this win here. Ultra Ball is at least going to start us off here. Is there another Luminion? To... This is a list that's playing only a one single Luminion. If there's a world where you can play down enough cards, mm. then maybe Restart yeah. could help you find some additional resources. We haven't seen the hand yet. If I am already <laughs> waiting there, you're in a great spot. Lucas showing off the pal pad and the boss is ours, but, uh -oh. but they're still they're still counter catchers. Yeah. They're, that's they're, true. Look what mind games are going on here. Right? <laughs> I know. He already was blocking that Pidgeot in the last <laughs> the last few turns. Exactly. I think there's mind games both ways for our opponents. Or our opponents here. Gift energy. Where is it? It is in the, the hand. It's played down now. <laughs> These are the two biggest cards here for Lucas now. What can he find? Brandon is going to cause me to have a heart attack here, Kyle. <laughs> Gosh. That's... Doesn't even want to restart some additional cards. Who cares? Yeah, this is it. This is the end game here for both of our players now. Brandon sitting at one prize card. Counter is found. The game is over. Lucas Singh is your LA regional champion. Unreal. That is insane. To see here, Lucas Zing, it's gonna come down to this. Just and the final standings are here, and they are official. Luke